He was God on earth as well. It proves and affirms the apostles in terms of what they were doing to spread the gospel. Once the church began to grow and to, to mature, there's no need for the prophesying. There's no need for the speaking of tongues. There's no need to raise the dead. That's all God's domain. That's not for us. But again, we still do have gifts. Some of you in here are great teachers. Working with our ed ministry, we, we can see that. Some of you are great with encouragement. You send letters or cards or you call people to check on them. Some of you are great with going to visit those who are sick and shut in. Some of you are great, again, in just the idea of building up, or you're great song leaders for that matter, or you can sing well. There's different gifts that we all have here. Amen. Are you using your gifts to give God glory? Amen. Are we using our gifts just for our own self gain? You can tell someone he provides spiritual gifts. He's our guarantee. He's our guarantee. And, he us. and he seals us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our lesson on this morning. Thank you. I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want you to go to sleep yet, but the, the idea is, do you know how rich you really are? You have access to God the Father. You have access to God the Son. You have access to God the Holy Spirit. There's no reason why we should want or need for anything because God has given us everything we need. That's why we're still here today. He's provided for us. In times you just didn't know how it was going to work, God provided. And we're called to remember our promise. Remember the, rather remember the promise that God has given to us. How are we allowing His Spirit to work within us? This piece here says, the Holy Spirit, excuse me, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. I don't have to jump up and dance and, 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 and talk in tongues to let you know that God is working within me. Because if God is really working within you, this is what you're going to produce. Let's go here real quick and then we're going to close out. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 22. If you really want to know and you're asking the question, is God's spirit really working within me? Well, let's take a look at that. We can assess that just right now as we bring this to a close. Galatians, I'm sorry, Galatians 5 and 22. The Holy Spirit will produce fruit within you. What does that fruit look like? The Bible says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. You're going to love people regardless. Joy. You're, gonna, you're not going to be focusing on whether I'm happy or not. No, you're going to be joyful because you understand the promise has been made. He's in control. He's got everything going. Peace. You're going to be in connection or peace with the Father. You've got long-suffering. You've got kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. A real big one. A real big one, especially in our culture, especially for our kids. Self-control. Can you control yourself not to go over there? Can you control yourself not to go with them? Can you control yourself to turn around and just walk away? That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's how you know God is working within you. Again, He seals us. He is our guarantee. He provides spiritual gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rich. If you haven't been acting like it, why not give it a shot now? If you are a Christian, Start acting like you're rich. You get so caught up on the secular poverty and, and what we don't have, focus on spiritually what makes you rich. And I'm not going to give that to you. We all have different wants, and, 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 but all of my needs are always fulfilled. If you know you haven't been allowing God's spirit to work within you, let him start doing his job. You're not going to catch it today and leave it losing tomorrow. He needs to be with you Sunday. He needs to be with you Monday. He needs to be with you Monday at 2.30. He needs to be with you Monday at 9.50. He needs to be with you Tuesday, Wednesday when you come to Bible study, Thursday when you're just not quite sure what's going on, Friday when you got paid or not. He needs to be with you Saturday when folks give you a call and say, hey, let's get out here. No, no, the Holy Spirit's with me. I'm not going to allow that to happen. He needs to be with you Saturday afternoon, Saturday midnight. He needs to be with you every day. And as a Christian, we are cognizant. We are called to be cognizant and really think and dwell upon that idea. He needs to be with us, and if he's with us, it's going to show in our behavior. If he's with us, it's going to show in what we say to people. 
if he's with us, it's going to show and reflect how you think, which suggests how you act and how you speak. If you're not a Christian, I'm sorry, that was the Christian, wasn't it? If you're not a Christian, why do you think you're here today? We talk about, again, providential circumstances. Some of you, you just may be visiting today. Some may have come across others who have invited you here today for a purpose. I don't even know who you are. But there may be someone here who needs to have a, a relationship with God and to be sealed and marked authentically with him. Allow God's spirit to dwell within you and to work and regenerate you. You do a couple things. One, you hear the word of God. Not only did you hear it today, but you read it together. That's why I did spend some, some time looking at some scripture because we wanted you to be able to see that which, which is being preached this morning. You believe in Christ based upon the scriptures that you've read. Upon believing, it's a repentance. You have a repentance of sin. I'm going to stop doing things the way I, I, I'm doing them. They clearly are not working. It's 2017. I'm still doing the same stuff. I feel like I'm in the same rut. Get out of that rut. Repent of your sins. Change your habits. Change your behavior. Confess faith in Christ. It's Matthew 10, 32 to 33. Be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins. Once you're baptized, the Holy Spirit can do his, not its, but do his job within you to promote and advocate a life-going uh, transformation, on, excuse me, an ongoing life transformation. You just don't receive him and then you stop. Oh, I'm at it now. I'm good to go. No. His job now is to work and get you to the place where now you become more holy. Well, what do you mean when you say holy? Not better than. Not I'm holier than you. You know, I, I, I'm with the Lord. I've been with the Lord all this time, but you're not. No, we're not talking about that. Holy in the sense of now I start to separate myself from the world around me. And what do you mean by that? Not physically, but spiritually. I don't have to do the things that the world does. I don't have to listen to the things that the world listens to. I don't have to behave like the world behaves. I know I need to behave because I got scripture to back that up now because I have his spirit working within me who will help me determine how I'm going to respond or if I need to respond to certain behavior, certain circumstances. That's what his job is within us. So you're baptized, you have access to him. He dwells within you. Again, if you are a Christian and you need assistance, this is an opportunity for you to come forward. If you are not a Christian, you didn't come here by coincidence. Huh? There is the law of probability that's out there, but even God has control of that too. You made it here for a purpose today to hear his word. Amen. Hopefully that word will allow you and convict you to come forth. Put Christ on in baptism. Again, the choice is yours as we stand and have a verse of the song. Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, oh how I love, how I love just to call you
calling you to come back home. If you're lost, maybe you just found your way back home as of this morning. Come find your way, but don't refuse or negate or put off the spirit as he's trying to communicate with you. Again, he's not going to make you jump up and down and do wild things that's going to confuse the rest of us up in here. But he is going to lead you into a place where you can be at one with the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Take advantage of that time whilst you have it. Again, if you are a Christian and you know you've been going back and forth and you just haven't been allowing the Spirit to really work within you, come on back and get things right with the Father. The last thing we want to do is be separated from him. Not a Christian, don't put this off. Come back home. He'll take you further than you ever really wanted to go. And that's a great thing. He'll build you into something greater than you ever thought you could be. And that's a great thing. He'll put water back in your life where there was dysfunction and discord. And that's a great thing. Just let the Father work with you at this time. Jesus. Continue to ask for your prayers as well. Uh, 